Wow, okay, I just finished watching episodes five and six of The Perfect Match, and I have so many thoughts. I couldn't even continue because I wanted to get on here and just recap for you episodes five and six because, oh my God, a true villain has emerged, and her name, her name is Francesca. My God, guys, I was... Here I was last last freaking video being like, oh, I didn't really like Savannah, but she deserved it. Honestly, Savannah should have really been, really gone after Francesca because after the behavior from episodes five and six, I, I cannot. But let's just get into today's recap, guys. I'm going to recap episodes five and six. I haven't watched seven and eight, but you're going to get a separate recap for that at the end of the week. I just wanted to do these first two for you because I kind of wanted to have an episode where I could just really just recap with you because I've got so many new friends on the channel. Hello, thanks guys for coming on over. A lot of you said you wanted to hear more recaps and more reviews. So I decided I was gonna do episode five and six for you and then a separate video for seven and eight so that way I could really just talk about my feelings and talk about how crazy this show is. And you know what's nuts? Is while watching the show, I was like, is this even more, is this even about finding love anymore? Like. Because obviously the only couple here that seems like they would actually quote unquote win or be the perfect match is going to be Joey and Carousel because they're the only ones that are actually far enough. But I am so consumed by the rest of the drama that I could really care less about who's who's actually who's actually going to win this thing. So let's get into episode five, guys. I'm going to recap. I've got my notes here. Oh my God. I mean, episode six was the juicy one, but episode five really started it up. So the episode starts off with Francesca. She goes um, she goes on the date with Damien. As you guys remember from the last episode, she decided to ditch Dom at the boardroom and go on a date with Damien because she just was like, oh, what the hell? I'm going to just do it. And then we find out that she wants to feel sexual tension with Damien. I was like, okay, so you lied to all of us. You weren't just going on the date with him just to like talk and be friends. No, you were going into this date because you knew that there was some underlying tension and you wanted to know if you if he felt the same way, but you couldn't do it because, <laughs> a little recap for you guys, if you didn't know, on Love is Mine After the Altar season one, season one, I forget whichever season he was on. Yeah, it has to be season one. Uh, and the After Altar, um, what's, what was her name? G... Whatever, the girl that was with Damien, who's now dating Blake from The Bachelor, um, basically they were still kind of together and he brought Francesca and it just caused a whole ordeal. And then everyone just basically thought that Francesca was dating Damien on the side and was like thinking that she was a homewrecker and ruining their relationship and all this jazz. Whatever, they did a little recap on the show for us. But basically in this episode Francesca and Damien are like doing this like yoga together and Damien decides to apologize to her for what happened on the love is blind after the altar um, episode that she was on he's like you didn't deserve that everyone went after you and thought you were a homewrecker and she's like exactly like I'm not all this stuff and then and then they made out they lit they legit just started making out what the fuck is going on in here on this day? I was like, guys, I thought you never kissed. I mean, to me, that looked like maybe you had kissed before. Or maybe it was also the idea that, like, he was, like, they had this suppressed sexual energy that, like, the moment they could make out and there was, like, no reason for them not to make out, they were like, well, we're going to go for it. But, yeah, Francesco's just basically telling us, yeah, I wanted to feel that sexual tension with him. I was like, ah. Uh, I cannot. I, what? Villain. The villain of the series has emerged. And she will continue to show her colors. So anyway, we go back to the house and Georgia basically confronts Chase. Um, because in the last episode, Georgia did choose Chase um, to match up together. But then Francesca, which I didn't know, was, you know, spreading some little rumors around. Now, it could be true, I don't really know. But basically creating like seeds of doubt in Georgia's mind saying that Chase had a girl has a girlfriend outside of the show and he lives with her and all of this stuff and I was like wait what this is a thing I had no idea but basically Georgia confronts him about it and he's just like no that's not true and it's just Chase kind of being more of Chase I I totally agree where Georgia's coming from with like not being able to trust him to me, he doesn't seem like a very trustworthy person. I'm not saying that he does have a girlfriend and that he's lying. I mean, he could possibly not, but like the fact that he was like jumping ship 
like the way he was and basically telling every single girl in the house what she wanted to hear so that he could get picked and vice versa i didn't like that um so the fact that george is like you know really questioning his his um his word and she's not sure if she trusts him like i completely completely get it so at the end of the whole conversation she's still kind of like oh i don't know if i really trust this guy which i don't trust him either then also remember in the last episode ines got um a date with bart bartiste oh no god no god please no no from love is blind i cannot Stand that man um if you watch any of my love is blind recaps you'll know how i truly feel about him and honestly it did not change in these next two episodes in these two episodes that i watched i li I'm, i i just i couldn't i can't stand him i anytime he's on screen i'm like please get this man off screen but i thought it was such an interesting choice i was like they are not gonna have a good i didn't feel the vibe like when they were like yeah let's put them together i was like really them really Really, that I did not see them ever matching, but whatever. They go on the date, and I, I was laughing because I know that Bartiz is into blondes, and he keeps getting set up with, like, brunettes, and I'm like, <laughs> sorry. But anyway, they go on this, like, fun date. They're, like, riding a bike, and he keeps asking her where she's from when she's clearly has said that she's from France, like, three times, and that shows how much she actually pays attention when she's talking. Again, I just, I can't, anytime he talks, I just get so annoyed. I get so peeved. Um, but Ines says she felt good after the day and says that there might be a potential for a perfect match. And I said, you will soon find out that that is incorrect. Incorrect. But anyway, the dates all come back and Francesca and Damien come in and Francesca's all like, oh, look, we can't hold hands. Like, I want to, but we can't hold hands. Whatever. All this, like, weird dramatic shit. Anyway, Dom, um is crying he's a very emotional man he's like really upset because he can see that there's something going on and he's basically knows he's gonna go home because at this point no one's gonna choose him francesca's not gonna choose him so he's just crying he said this one thing and i'm like he's not wrong and i and we all saw it it was just like you know he, francesca was giving him all this beef about being like don't talk to savannah don't do this don't do that and he obliged he was like yeah yeah i'm going to do what you want honey i'm not going to talk to savannah and then what happened she came she came over and then screwed him over and that was effed up i i feel for tom i i mean i always call him tom dom i feel for dom um in this episode because you can tell he falls hard he's like shane he falls hard for someone like he, he puts his heart First, there is no mind, there is only heart. No mind, just heart. And he is uh, so effed up in this in this episode. And, like, so effed up. Anyway, we move on. Francesca's telling Carousel about her her kiss with Damien, how the date went, went. And honestly, these two have now become, like, the two girls I cannot stand. They're, like, their own little, like, clique. And they are annoying and rude and mean and gossipy. And I'm not a fan of it. I do not like them. <laughs> Get in, loser. We're going shopping. But anyway, Francesca tells Carousel about how good her kiss with Damien was and how she never felt that passion with um, with Dom and how she like felt that sexual tension and wanted to rip each other's clothes off and she didn't have that feeling with Dom. And I was like, bitch, then, why, then why'd you choose him? Then why, why'd you lead him on? If You knew. You knew from day one that he wasn't going to be the one for you. Why'd you do that? God, it makes me want to have Savannah come back on the show and be like, fine, I'll get with Dom. Then we move on. Uh, Chase is trying again to talk to Georgia. Um, and he gives her... <laughs> He's like, I'm going to do this grand gesture for her, you know, so tell her that I care. He gives her a rock in a little box, basically saying like, I will be like this. I will be, you know, that person that is there for you. I will be sturdy. I will, like, I understood the meaning behind it. Georgia was not the one, though. Sorry, Chase. Georgia was not the one for you in this case. Like, she just, she just wasn't. Um, and she's kind of laughing in the side interview, like, like, I get the gesture, but I don't think it was the right one. Um, so she's still kind of not feeling it. She still doesn't know if she's really going to really continue to choose this, you know? Then you have Izzy and Nick, and Izzy and Nick are chatting, and basically Izzy's just like, you know, you should have picked me on the first night. If you would have picked me, I think we would have been in a different situation. But because you chose Inez over me, because we kind of had a connection before, I think it kind of messed up what we had here. And 
Also, by the way, I didn't. I, I I forgot to say that this night is when the girls are choosing the guys. I forgot to mention that. So Izzy's kind of like, and you know, I don't know if I'm going to pick you. Basically, uh, then we have a very interesting moment. We have Fran and Dom finally sitting down and talking, and she does not deserve this man. She really doesn't. Like this guy went all in on you, and it made me so sad because. He said it in that first episode. He said, wow, like my eyes went to Francesca, but I know she's out of my league. Like she's not going to be interested in me. He wrote her off. He was like, there's no way this girl's going to be interested in me. No way. But she came to him and was like, hey, dude. And he was shocked. I remember seeing his face. Do you guys remember his face? His face was shocked. Shooketh. When he said like, when she said, hey, do you want to match up? He was like, wait, wait, with me? You want to match with me? He was shocked. So now I just feel so horrible Because she has, like, played him. Like, so hard played him. And, you know, he hugs her. And he is so messed up in this moment. And it makes me sad also because, like, he's like, you know, I'll be here for you. And he tells her that he... (laughs) He tells her that he loves her. And in that moment, I was like, Dom, take those words back. Take them back. And look, it, it could be very easy that you love someone like, oh, you know, girl, I love you. Not necessarily like I'm in love with you. And I hope to God that's what it was. Because when when you read it, it made it look very like, if you if you read into it as in like him saying like, I love you, that's a bit much for me. And I don't think it should have gone that far because I mean, you've known the girl for like literally nine days. There's no way you're in love with her. Granted, we have seen the love is blind. Anything is possible. But, you know, I, I, I felt like it was a bit much. And she really took it to heart. She was crying, all this. Stuff. I was like, girl, you did this to yourself. Don't stop acting like you're crying and you're sad. You clearly never had a thing for him. Like, just tell him that. Oh, I can't. Mm, I cannot. Anyway, um, Damien and Fran end up talking. And they match. Not surprising. Yay, whatever. Izzy's basically starting to talk to Bartise and she's feeling him. She's like, oh, like he's a fun dude. And I can see this match. I'm not gonna lie. When Izzy and Bartise started talking, I was like, they seem like they match each other's energy. They're both like very high energy. They're both like, having drinks. They're like fun people. I can see that vibe more than Bartise and Ines, to be completely honest. I see it. But yeah, she um ends up picking Bartiste in the end. Izzy ends up picking Bartiste and mixing shit up in the house. Because basically now that leaves Nick and Shane to be like, fuck well. Because remember, she was paired with Shane. So now it was like, oh, am I going to go back to Nick or am I going to stick with Shane? She chose none of them and went back and chose, excuse me, cho- she chose Bartiste instead. Which again, why? I can't stand that man, but whatever. Everyone's just really sad that dom is gonna possibly leave and george is like i don't want him to leave and she you know calls him over and he's just like okay do you want to talk and then they go to the side and talk and she's like hey like you know there's no one else in this house that i trust anyone else i want to get to know other than you like i'd love if you say like if i asked you to stay and match with me would you remember at this point he's already been like nah i'm over it like i'm gonna go home no one's gonna choose me etc so she kind of convinces him and he's like okay yeah sure like I'd give it another try so she matches with Dom um which is a couple that I really like I really like Georgia honestly I she is I hope she doesn't mess it up for me in episode seven and eight because I don't know what's to come please don't ruin it in the comments right now I I in these two episodes that I'm recapping I really really like Georgia I think she seems like the most real person in there then we have the ending where well not the ending of the episode but the ending of that night where all the women have to choose and poor Ines is stuck because she has to choose between the two guys she's recently matched with or Chase, who she has no match with whatsoever. So she has to choose basically between Nick and Shane. I honestly I really thought at some point she was just gonna pick Chase just for the fuck of just for the hell of it, you know? But uh she ends up bringing Shane over and to talk to him. And this is when I knew I'm like these people definitely cannot be together because they were so toxic to each other in like five minutes. Basically, she tells Shane, like, hey, do you kind of want to, do you want to try again? And then he's just upset, pissed off, because he feels like the second option. Because if he, if she didn't choose him, she was going to pick Bartiste. All of this stuff. They start yelling at each other. Shane walks away. Just 
so much. They're both like yelling at each other and then eventually they calm down. And obviously there's, there's drinks involved in this. Like people are just intoxicated at this point. So everything's just like high, like heightened to another extreme. Shane is like walking out. He's like, I don't want anything to do with this. This is embarrassing. Blah, 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 blah. Like just ridiculous stuff. Like honestly ridiculous. Um, but in the end, for whatever reason, they still decide to match up. They say it's because they care about each other. And I'm like, this is a very toxic relationship. And it would never actually work in real life. So, whatever. Moving on. So, Chase and Nick, bye-bye. They didn't find a match, and they are out of the house. So, you know, we, you know, the next day, everyone wakes up with their matches. Damien and Francesca are pretty much, like, in the bed together, he's giving her a massage, and she's like, oh my god, like, I'm just, we're so sexually attracted to each other, I will, all this crap, whatever. Okay, and this is something I noticed, and I might talk about it even more when I get into my next recap, but with Damien, I felt like he was just there. Like, there was no surface him, there was no, nothing to him, he was so boring. It was just like he was just there to be with Francesca, that's like, the only thing I never heard about him I never heard about how he felt I never hear him talking to other people about how he's feeling he's just very like bland and boring and I don't know what she sees in him but anyway we move on to the challenge of the day and guys this was a fun challenge this was such a fun challenge I absolutely loved it so they had basically they tricked them so what they did is they had all the couples come out in like their outfits and then Nick's like okay we're gonna have a really big challenge today it's gonna be very physical it's gonna in involve all this stuff and he's like but before we start everyone come over here and get your stuff for the challenge and it's basically like like headbands like they're gonna do something physical you know headbands and socks and stuff like that for their team and he's like okay now before we start the game what I want is everyone to line themselves up in what they think is the most compatible or who they think is the most compatible couple and then everybody's like oh what do we have what if we disagree it's like well everyone has to figure it out who they think is the best couple and then uh, carousel and joey are obviously like well obviously we're number one we're the most compatible here and everybody's like okay fine you guys can be first because they're like the most coupled up at this point so it was like them then it was fran and damien and then it was georgia and dom and then it was izzy and bartiste and then Sh um shane and Inez. and they all match up and then they go down the list being like why do you think you're the most compatible whatever blah blah blah, blah. A whole bunch of, you know, side comments are said about Dom and Francesca, whatever. It is what it is. And then <laughs> Nick is like, all right, so that's it. That's the game. And everybody's like, what? And then they're like, yeah, our winners are Carousel and Joey. You guys are the most compatible in the house. And everybody's like, what? Like, I was shook. It. That was such a good twist. I loved that twist of the game because it literally was just like, the house deciding who they thought was the most compatible. Carousel and Joey are winning this thing. If they're not winning this thing, I'd be shocked. They win, and then they're like, oh, they have to go to the boardroom now. So usually they go on a date, and then they go to the boardroom, but in this instance, they had Carousel and Joey go, go and um, do the boardroom first. They go to the boardroom, they decide, and basically they decide to put Dom and Shane on dates. That's where it goes. Uh, Carousel and Joey go on their date and he asks her to be his girlfriend after she pretty much is like he asks her like what do you want after the show you know what's gonna happen she's like well I want a commitment like that's what I want I want a commitment and then he's just like okay well what if I committed to you right now and she's like what do you mean and he's like like do you want to be together and she's like what do you mean are you asking me like basically just being like sir just ask me to be your girlfriend like that's what she wanted she wanted those words to come out of his mouth and he did. He asked her, he's like, do you want to be my girlfriend? And she's just like, yes! Oh, my God! Being carousel crazy reality TV that she is, just nuts. That she jumps on him and all this stuff. Good for them. I'm happy. I hope to, I hope they're together. And I hope they're not as toxic in real life. But here we are. Uh, in real life. Uh, off camera, I hope they're figuring out their their issues okay so then back in the house oh this was a, this was this was a turn of events you have georgia basically confronting fran not confronting but like talking to her because she's like you know i, I know it feels weird and i know that like you know this was interesting like right before that she was uh georgia was talking to izzy and basically being like i know that the reason why carousel chose dom for the date is because she's friends with francesca and francesca's not going to want to do anything with damien if dom's always around so that was definitely a strategic move and i agree 
I completely agree, especially when things continue to go on in these episodes. But basically, Georgia confronts her and talks to Francesca and says, like, hey, you know, I just didn't want it to be weird and, you know, all this stuff. And Frank is, Fr- Francesca's acting like she's okay. She's like, oh, I'm fine. Whatever. Like, it's cool. It is a little bit weird because I don't want to do anything, you know, like, in front of him out of respect. All this crap. And I'm like, out of respect? Out of, out of respect? Girl, you already, that respect is gone. And it's obviously clear, like, you were dating someone else. So why are you acting like, whatever? I did not like it. I didn't like it. And then she is, she is so messed up. Fran is, like, so evil. So evil that she even goes and tells her. She's like, yeah, I'm like, you know, I just feel bad, like, for you. Because, like, the night before he told me, like, that he loved me, you know? And that was just, that was a lot. And I was like, so she did Oh my God, she's just trying to break them up so bad. And I'm like, why? Why are you doing that? If you want everyone to find love in the house, why are you messing that up? He was not for you. Fine. You focus on your relationship. Why are you trying to ruin Georgia's now? And Georgia knows. So Georgia's like already peeved by her. It's actually funny because also guys, remember when she came into the house, everybody was like, oh my God, we're the best of friends. We're all friends. We know, all know each other. And then now it's like, I will rip you to shreds. I do not care that we were friends. Wow, like that was her power play. She was like, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. And that's how that episode ended. I said, what a power play, Miss Francesca. I just call her Fran now because, oh God. I I literally, I cannot stand, I cannot stand her. But guys, okay, let's go on to episode six. We're moving on to the next episode and this is where some real shit goes down. And I had to, I had to record because I was like, there's no way I can watch episode seven and eight without recording these two first. So we had Chloe and Shane go on a date together. Yay, Chloe's back. She is so fun. I love Chloe. Chloe's one of my favorite like reality TV stars that came out of Too Hot to Handle. I think she's genuine, genuinely real. Like I love who she is. She's just such a fun energy. Like when she comes into the room, she's funny. She's not afraid to be who she is. She's English. She's loud, like super fun. And like I want her to find love so badly like I, I i'm rooting for her in life like she's just so freaking hilarious and so fun yeah so she and her and Sh- and shane are on this date and you know they're having a good time they're playing jokes they're showering together nothing too sexual but like it was fun like they seemed like they had a really good connection a good vibe their their energies are both really high so i think that was nice like i i, I felt like a good vibe between them then you had Dom go on his date with this girl named Colony, who's also from Selling Sunset. Um, and Colony was just was like, I ain't playing games. Like, I'm not here for games. Like, I'm looking for someone serious, all this stuff. And and I, what I loved was that Dom was already, in the day you could tell that he was already like, George is my girl. Like, I don't want to, like, F that up. Because he even tells her, like, you know, she put herself out there to save me. And I, I feel like, out of respect, I should do the same thing. And I liked that. He didn't go and F things up. I really liked that. Um, I hope, let's hope no one messes it up. But all in all, like, honestly, didn't even feel the vibes on that date. I was like, mm, this is, this, there's a disconnect. They're not going anywhere. So Fran and Damien are out talking and she's just like, you know, like, I don't want to, I don't want to be all up on you in front of Dom. Like, I just want to be respectful. And I'm like, Why? Why are you even caring what Dom's doing? If you didn't like him, if you didn't care, why are you caring so much about what he thinks about you guys? Like, I, I could not, I'm like, girl, you did this. You did this to yourself. Like, why are we, you know, you did this. Anyway, so everyone's pretty much mingling. Yeah. Oh, and also a reminder on this night is when the guys have to choose the girls. So two girls will be going home. Um, but everyone's mingling, and Dom is pretty much like, you can tell he's he's like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Georgia, and he pretty much introduces Colony to Bartiste and is like, this is a really strong woman. She could know her. It was really fun. It was a good setup. I I loved it. He was trying to you know set up something. Except why why to Bartiste why choose anyone else why Bartiste oh god I can't oh my god anyway they go sit on the couch and I was like red alert please do not he is not the one for you you know she was like I want to get married I want to have kids like I'm looking for someone serious I was like Bartiste is not the one he is not the one and you know I was actually glad you know she finds out that he's like 26 and she's like oh my god you're like a baby and then he's like oh well how old are you and she's like are you like 28 she's like no I'm 30 and she's like, well, I never date. She's like, she's like, I don't date guys younger than me. And he's like, well, I don't date women younger than me. And I was like, oh, 
ill, ill. But it was like the same thing with Nancy all over again. I was like, girl, you better get out of here. And what I appreciated in this moment was that Nan- Bartiz asked her, what, when are you like wanting to have kids? Like in two weeks, like a year from now, two years, like what is your, your thought? And she's like, you know, at least in a year or two, like I'd really want to have kids. And he's like, okay, well then I'm not the one, the one for you. And Colin, Colin he was like, weren't you just about to get married on the show? And I was like, bingo. He's not ready to get married. He's not ready to have kids. He was on that show for I don't know what reason. But thankfully, that ends. And I'm like, thank God, girl. You dodged a bullet. I'm glad. Go, just, you ran, a, you, you dodged a bullet. Run, girl, run. Uh, but at this point, then we have Inez who's breaking down because she knows that Shane is pretty much going to pick Chloe and she doesn't have anyone anymore. And, you know, she's fine because she und- she knows and she could tell when, when Chloe and Shane came in that they really had a really good vibe and he was glowing and it was just really nice and she just wants everyone to find love. And Inez is so sweet. I want her to find love too. She's like, I can tell she's clearly trying to find her match because she has gone from person to person, but not in a manipulative way, not in an evil, messed up way. Like you could tell she's just genuinely trying to find that spark with the right person. And I hope she finds love. I really do. Um, so everyone's pretty much hu- sad. And, you know, she's hugging it out with, with, with everyone. She goes and talks to Shane and, and they both talk it out. And they're like, you know, we tried. And it's, you know, you know, they're both like, you know, we tried. And I don't want you to leave with there any resentment or any bad blood. And they both hug. And it was very mature and very nice. They have a really nice goodbye. And that is it. Well, so we thought. But more on that in a couple of minutes here. Uh, Georgia and Dom talk it out about the date. And he's like, you know, I I, I, I didn't want to be with her. I want to continue to, to see if there's something here with us. And she pretty much tells her, like, or tells him, like, what Fran said about the whole I love you thing. And I'm like, ooh, Georgia is not messing around. And I like that. Uh, she's just like, hey, like, do you, like, do you feel this way, et cetera, et cetera. And he's just like, no, that's done in my eyes. He pretty much just says, no, like, I'm not into her anymore. Like, I'm over it. I have to move on, et cetera, et cetera. How true that really is, I don't know. Because I don't know how true that I love you was or if that was just like, like I love you, girl. Or if it was like, I'm in love with you, girl. Like, I can't really tell which one it was. I mean, he was, he was really into her. He was sobbing. So, I don't know. We shall see. But he kisses Georgia and it's super cute. And I'm like, oh. Okay, there might be something there. I'm, 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 I'm hoping that there's something there, right? And then you have freaking Fran, <sighs> Fran, and freaking Carousel on the side. Mind you, Dom and Dom and Georgia are like far away. It's not like like they're right in front of them kissing. They're like far away. They're like in another area. They're nowhere near them. But because Fran is so concentrated on looking at other people and looking at and, and looking and seeing what's going on with them and so focused on their damn relationship, she takes that as a hit to her ego when she's just like, oh, like how, how dare they make fun, like make out in front of me. I've been trying to be respectful to Dom by not doing this in front of him. And you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to make out with Dom now. I mean, I'm going to make out with Damien. I'm going to do all this stuff. And I was like, girl. Okay, why can't anybody give me a goddamn second? Girl, I am over it. I am so over this. This is so stupid. How how dare you act this way? Anyway, she starts making out with Damien, and it's all just because she wants to show that he, that if he can make out with her, I don't know. It was just if I was Damien, I would be questioning this relationship, honestly. But again, we didn't really get a lot from Damien in these episodes. He was he was pretty much just like the guy who was just like fawning over this girl. Like that was the only point of his of of him. That's what, right? That's what it feels like. Then, in a shocking turn of events, we have Bartise deciding to sit down and talk to Inez. And he says that he feels something for her and feels like there could be a connection. And he ends up saving her and matching with her. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what the motivation in that was, but I did not believe it for an even one second. Not even one. But I was like, girl, this is not going to work out. But anyway, they match. Izzy is completely shocked because 
obviously now her the person she ends up choosing did not choose her back this time and oof, so, so yeah uh basically in the end we have to say goodbye to Izzy and to Colony. And Colony herself was like, I don't think I really liked anyone here. I didn't see a vibe. Not really a thing. And I was like, I didn't see that either for you, girl. And okay, this is the point in the show, guys. Everyone is already so self is so established with someone that coming in this late in the game is going to be way too hard for you to find someone. Unless you bring in everyone all over again and really mix up people who left from like season, like from the first episode, the third episode, maybe. But if you still have the same people that have been together for like the last three weeks, like the chances of you finding someone, slim. Very, very slim. Um, I mean, Chloe looked out, but you know, it, it, takes, it takes a person. Um, but then this is when we really start to see, like, the evilness that is, I think it's the next morning, but we start to see the evilness that is Fran. She is gossipy with Carousel, and they're on the side just talking, like, terribly about these people. She literally comes, or, turn, like, grabs Carousel, and he's like, oh my god, can we just talk about these freaking people, and, like, how horrible they are? And I was like, oh my, how can you talk like this about people? Like, what the hell? Um, they're basically just gossiping about how terrible everyone in the house is. And I was like, what? What the heck? Like, why are you at? Like, what did they do to you? And my favorite is that Georgia is like, you know, like you could see that she's starting to figure that out. She's figuring out that Francesca doesn't like that everyone's so happy and that everyone has their couple. And she knows that, like, if she does not win the next challenge, that Francesca is going to put her on a date with somebody else and try to separate her and Dom out of just really just honestly I don't know what reason like if you're here to help other like if everyone is there to find help people find love then why are we being so manipulative and strategic and really trying to f people up like it's out of out of spite like that's wrong oh my god I just mm, I can't but we move on to the next challenge which was a fun one uh basically everyone's covered up in Everyone has their bathing suits on and they have like these sponges basically on their boobs, on their butts, on their situations. And um, the goal of the game is you have to get in the water and then you get up on these trampolines and you have to squeeze each other or whatever, whatever way to get as much water out of the sponges into like basically all the water will fall into a tub, like a, like a gallon of like a, a tub of water basically so the water that comes off of your body has to go into this little tub which will rise up a little ping pong ball and whoever gets the ping pong ball first will win the challenge and everyone's playing super fun a lot of people are being very dirty and like really like doing stuff very physical stuff it's actually hilarious but really fun really fun but in the end damien and francesca win which is bad because that means that they're gonna get in there and really stir shit up. Well, really, it's gonna be Francesca. I don't think Damon gives a f at this point. Um, so that really sucks. So everyone's like, "Fuck! Oh man, this is really gonna mess up anything." Then you have Fran and Damien because they win. They go on a date, and you could just tell he's pretty much just like obsessed with her. If that's the only thing he does, is just give her compliments, he's talking about how he wants to stare at her. There's just nothing deep about their conversation. Like they don't talk about anything other than like the fact that they want to kiss each other, and that's it. Like there is no depth to their conversations, and I don't like that. Then you have carousel and fran the next day talking about like the boardroom and who they should put in and fran is just trying to stir shit up and i hate that as i've been saying like, she's just trying to stir stuff up um i just don't understand why like i don't understand why why she's acting like this it's actually it's horrible and sh i can't uh, but anyway, Damien and Fran go into the boardroom. In the boardroom the whole time, she's like, well, I just want to test these relationships. I'm like, why? Why are you... If you don't people are happy, like, let's just let them be happy. Like, if you see somebody who you can tell really does need the date, then okay, bring someone in for them. But just to stir things up and to be mean, that's just rude. Like, being vindictive, which is what she's doing to Georgia and Dom. Like, really, and just whatever. But guys... I had to put down my notebook because the way this episode ends and I I'm, I can't wait to watch episode seven after this I, I literally cannot wait to watch episode seven because this has to be a hoax like this can't be real they're all choosing and Francesca's going down the list about who, you know putting people together and she's just like 
And then lastly, there's me. Like, do I want to put myself on a date? And I was like, well, <laughs> whatever. Like, I was, she's not going to put herself on a date. She's, you know, she seems to be doing well with Damien. And Damien walks out to reveal to everyone, you know, who's going on a date. And he comes out by himself. Oh, my God. He comes out by himself. Literally. He comes out by himself, guys. Like, and everybody's like, no, like, this isn't real. This is a hoax. And he's like, well, I guess I wasn't as good as I thought I was. I'm like, no, no, no No way. way. There is no way that Francesca just booted Damien. Guys, I, I'm, I'm shooketh, shooketh to the core. And I cannot wait to watch episode seven and eight and recap that for you guys because I have a feeling it's going to be a whirlwind of emotions. But guys, did you watch episodes five and six of The Perfect Match? If you have, comment down below. Let's chat about it. Let me know what you thought about these crazy freaking episodes. Let me know what you're thinking about Francesca because my God, that girl is evil and the true villain of this show which i never thought i did not expect that but here we are guys if you're interested in seeing more recaps or if you've not watched my last recap of the perfect match please go and check that out it's right over here and of course if you're interested in more reality tv show recaps i also have another playlist for that and if you like this video of course make sure you press that like button it really helps me out and of course if you're interested and you liked this kind of video please consider subscribing it's a really good time and yeah i will see you guys in the next video Bye!